people will then target toward a date. And I, you know, there are people out there now that are saying, oh, you know, it's right around the corner. At any moment now, why won't the aliens save us? Yeah. We need to save ourselves. This was a quid pro quo for them to get certain information from that Kyella showed me. Uh, I demanded certain information back, and actually it was information concerning the time travel issue, because they, they were still trying to be, you know, they were still reticent about inf informing me as to what the real nature of the situation was, as, as late as 2001. The looking glass shows probabilities, or has shown probabilities. The, the cube would react with the people present. So there was a, a, uh, an alteration, if you will, over what you were seeing from it. It would actually spin out as a yellow disc out of the top of it, where the word yellow book originally uh -huh. came from. Yeah. Actually, I used that to our advantage at the T9, because that, in fact, was present at the T9, and I projected certain information which caused a little upset during the, uh, during the meeting, uh, but I was also allowed to show them probable outcomes. So in fact, the yellow book, the cube, was used for that purpose. Yeah. Shockingly, they happened to see themselves standing on the bones of their own families and things like that in the vision, and they ultimately decided to remove Lotus as well as certain abductions um, from the, uh, the Town 9 Treaty. They were handing this cube around from country to country to the elitists in the countries to look into their own futures so that they could pick the best paths for themselves. I'm happy to pass along the information. I'm honored, I'm honored to pass along the information that I, I understand that the Yellow Book is no longer accessible. I will say this to everybody, um, whomever took it. Uh, it's in safe hands and it won't be used to harm humanity. How, how would you like to start? What, well, what's the best place to start as far as Stargates? Are I've concerned? got it. Well, I've got a list of questions okay. here in front of me, submitted by you two, all 30 of them. <laughs> and, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have mentioned the number. No, no. They are decommissioned. They are separated into their three components. There's a projection component, uh, a, a ring component, and also a barrel component to the to the both the Stargate devices as well as the um, the uh, looking glass device. Uh, the Stargates also have um, field posts, and again, I'm not a physicist, so I wouldn't be the the appropriate one to uh, to make comment as to how they work. But there were field posts that were positioned around the actual um, uh, gates, and. Uh, they have been stored, I guess. I'm not certain what happened to the field components, but um, of the three components, they've actually been de decommissioned and liaisons to the European Union, the United Nations, and NATO are actually in possession of them. And there is no one group which has the other one of the other two components. Um, well, okay, so. So everybody's actually, staring at everybody and they're not. They can't put the, the equipment together because everybody is mutually dependent and looking questioningly at everybody else. So everybody is literally protecting everybody else. Uh, of the actual base operating equipment, there are three components to it, which is a, prote a projection device of some sort, a barrel, and a set of rings, electromagnetic rings. Are we able to know how many man-made stargates there were on the planet? Uh, no. I'm, okay. I'm not going to comment as to the, the total. I will say that there was over 50. Really? Yeah. Wow. In different countries of the world? Yes. Okay, and these are man-made? Yes. Okay, so, and now these are these, they're, they're, Well, see, it's not a Stargate. It's a, it's a device which accesses. Okay. Which right. accesses a, a portal, a wormhole. Does it or access a, a natural, in other words, the man-made device yes. accesses a natural stargate. It draws off a from natural a natural world. ERB, an Einstein-Rosen bridge. Okay. It accesses it and somehow works, uh, from what I understand, not in parallel, but almost like piggybacks on the, on the energy of the natural stargate. Yeah. Okay. So, in other words, if there were, only, if there were 50 man-made devices mm -hmm. accessing they would be accessing a corresponding 50 natural star, um, energy vortexes. That I don't know. There, there's okay. a possibility, in fact, that when, when the looking glass was, was operated, they were usually worked uh, in tandem. 
It required a second looking glass to be turned on at the same time to get acoustics through. Hmm. So unless a second one was turned on, which was operated at one of the places where uh, Will U House had been, uh, that's, he saw the, the second node location. Uh, as opposed to the first note being over at, at the Papoose facility. Two, two pieces of equipment, two looking glasses, were required to be turned on at the same time to be able to hear acoustics or, or sound, if you will, from whatever the, the people were watching, but to go to piggyback in tandem with, the, with the, uh, the visual response of the equipment. That it required two to be turned on to hear anything. Huh. And then both sides could hear the same thing. So I suppose both of the looking glasses being tuned to the same thing was accessing the same tunnel, if you will, to the oh, information. Okay, yeah, that's what I was wondering. Okay, so the looking glass has an ability to show one the future, but a stargate or, you know, a or equipment that accesses a stargate mm -hmm. or wormhole is for time travel, right? We're talking about two different things. Yes. Are they using the same technology? Essentially, yes. Uh, the, the original device was the Stargate device. That was then increased in, in power, if you will, with the use of these field posts. And how it pumped up the power, how it stabilized it, I don't know. Uh, you'd need to speak with a physicist about that. Okay, and However, it increased it enough to where it became a looking glass? Uh, well, no. the abilities of a looking glass? No, no. Uh, it would be pumped up in power to stabilize the doorway, if you, if you will, to step through into a, another location, right. which in essence, because distance and time are relative, the same thing, step two into another time. Uh, the looking glass device was a back-engineered Stargate. Okay. So it was actually back engineered from the original cylinder seal data, which right. allowed us to produce the, the Stargate access devices, if you will, what we call the Stargates. Hmm. Um, it's, a, it's a back engineered device, the looking glass is. So the looking glass is a secondary device, and it was coming into its uh, fore in the 60s and 70s. And Will saw one of the first generations of it, from what I understand, very large piece of equipment. They always get smaller no matter what. I mean, look at what's happened with the computers. Um, Who Will saw? Oh, Will, yeah. Will. Yeah, Will you house. You house saw the, the original looking glass. He saw one of the original looking glasses uh, demonstrated, uh, and in fact, it's going to be in the DVD that we're getting ready to, to put out, the actual interview, uh, where he was indicating uh, the firing of a bullet, I believe it was, through uh, an object. And... Um, there was a, a time delay where the bullet actually passed through the object, where he saw the bullet passed the object, or the projectile, if you will, a rail gun, I believe, is what was being... Gun. Yeah, it was a rail gun that was being used. And then afterward, they saw the impact of the device. So they were, they were already playing with it in the, uh, the early 70s, early to mid-70s, with dealing with uh, uh, time sequences. Wasn't the original looking glass a um, back-engineered from... Alien technology? Yes. Okay. Um, but it also, there were also, there was information around the cylinder seals mm -hmm. that they used as also, and that, that those cylinder seals also came from um, well, an off-world race. Is that from, not from, 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 well, no, the cylinder seals didn't, the information on them on did. On came from. Um, which was maybe the Anunnaki? Is that um, kind I, of our... I wouldn't feel comfortable in characterizing it okay. with that name. Um, okay. I but really was, shouldn't go. But it was off-world technology originally. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And at this point, like, okay, say that was in the 60s, the 50s, the 60s, mm, you said. Well, yes. That's when they started actually being... being um, you know, showing a lot of uh, um, interest in actually building the equipment to be able to see over the, over the curvature of time space so that they could see into the future and somewhat into the past, but basically the future. Okay, so there's also our Henry Deacon um, contact said mm -hmm. there was a black box that came on one of the crafts. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you're familiar with that black box. Did mm -hmm. you have exposure to that as, mm -hmm. as well? 
Yeah, so it, it was, was it was something that we called the cube or the yellow disc or yellow cube. Yes. Okay, but then that was not a looking glass. That. Was that a looking glass? Um, that is a a variant of the technology. Okay. However, uh, whilst the looking glass shows probabilities or has shown probabilities, the the cube would react with the people present. So there was a, a uh, an alteration, if you will, over what you were seeing from it. It would actually spin out as a yellow disc out of the top of it, where the word yellow book originally uh -huh. came from. Yeah. Uh, and depending upon what predisposition, it's kind of like uh, uh, little Yoda telling uh, young Luke, you bring in there what you have with you. You know, whatever is in there is what you bring. Um, you could then change the perspective, the tilt, if you will, the orientation or angle of the information being presented back to you. So unless you are well prepared to deal with such a thing, human interaction and human emotions bring instability of the provenance of the information. Okay, that's, that's what went on with the black box, you're saying? Yes. Okay, but with yes. the looking and glass... And I, I actually, I use that to our advantage at the T9, because that, in fact, was present at the T9, and I projected certain information which caused a little upset during the, uh, during the meeting, and they got certain abductions removed and Lotus removed off the calendar and things like that. I caused some real trouble in Can other you words. elaborate? Are you willing well, to elaborate? The, the, let me sit here and consider what I should and should not. Uh, okay. During the negotiations for the Tau 9-6, I was asked to supply a model for the Lotus. In fact, Marcia and I were both asked because they knew tangentially she was involved. Uh, I agreed to do so, which is what you respond when you're a sworn operative. It's yes, unless there are great, great um, objections. I was then taken to the location where the, the treaty was actually being negotiated. Give a short recitation as to the nature of Lotus. What was happening is the, the P45Ks used Lotus. They wanted to use Lotus for the back engineering of their own neurological problem. Uh, I was uh, objecting to its use, but still to provide, was under orders to provide a model. Um, I was prepared to do so. Uh, but I was also allowed to show them probable outcomes. So, in fact, the yellow book, the cube, was used for that purpose. Yeah. Shockingly, they happened to see themselves standing on the bones of their own families and things like that in the vision, and they ultimately decided to remove Lotus as well as certain abductions um, from the, uh, the Town 9 Treaty. So we were successful in getting certain things removed. Uh, I, I, I think I can safely mention at this time, because we're only one OF9 and one, one TAU9 treaty away from the passage through the, the, the completion of the passage through the, the galactic plane. So I think I'm, I'm pretty well safe to, to go ahead and mention it now. They're not going to be able to get it back put on the treaties and all of that in the time that we have left. Uh, in other words, they got outfoxed. And that's what happens when you're negotiating in treaties. So you but. use the ca capacity of the yellow book or little black box to yep. show them the future implications exactly. of, of what using the Lotus to amplify or to or to rectify their own biological this is true. problems. This is true and and that was skewed by it, it takes a great deal of emotion to skew the imagery uh, and the the audio that comes with it, but um, I'll just say that I'm extremely vehement with regard to my my objection for the Lotus being used, and apparently that vehemence was sufficient to skew the the image enough to get them to jump back aghast and uh, in horror. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, okay, and and this this kind of like just for the sake of the audience to some degree, um, you have seen in I guess the yellow book or in the looking glass and you can correct me which one it is 
the future of Lotus in a sense. How Lotus becomes, um, you know, once it's, it's brought to the fore by you. Well, actually, no. No? No, no, I haven't. I haven't. Uh, the reports to me which came uh, concerning the future of Lotus, which we're not going to get into in, in depth this right. evening, um, was given to me as information. Oh, so you didn't see it? Personally see it, no. Okay. I was told. I see. I was told. That was during the early years, I say the early years of Lotus. It's only been going on for six years now. Right. But um, this was the latter half of 2001. And this was a quid pro quo for them to get certain information from that Kayela showed me. Uh, I demanded certain information back, and actually it was information concerning the time travel issue because they, they were still trying to be, you know, they were still reticent about in, informing me as to what the real nature of the situation was as, as late as 2001. Meaning the real situation was meaning how, how much access to Stargate, to, to time travel that they actually had? Right, the treaty, the whole treaty system. Uh, the situations involving the the treaties, their outcomes, the the uh, actual the actual potential uh, for both timeline number one and timeline number two outcomes. Uh, in in the case that we're in right now, we seem to be in a variant of timeline one, and that's good okay. for everything that I've seen uh, and and have read and reported to me concerning timeline number one. It's not happening exactly the way that they figured that it would. But then again it couldn't because we've made changes along the way which diverted us away from timeline number two and in so doing our future again I, I, I regard our future as something which is pretty much a, a blank slate. We're writing it for ourselves and so we're now seeing something coming to pass which is slightly different than the prognostication than the probabilities that we were seeing and uh, I'm, I'm good with what we're seeing so far but you know, we we are still faced with the challenges, the environmental degradation, etc. Okay. But hopefully, we will rise to the challenge. Okay, so this is interesting because it sounds like Kayela yeah. was instrumental in getting you to have greater access to intelligence about what the Looking Glass was well, telling MJ12. Yeah, it was it was the information that he was providing me, which provoked questions. Uh -huh. And and the the fact that they didn't even want to get into long-winded discussions with me uh, in the late '90s uh, concerning what he even was. After we had argued for years to find out even where the material was coming from, then we were finally given access to the material. I mean, this went on for a few years. Meaning, and it, okay, but your your interaction with Kayela was was leading you one way and giving you one set of information. And MJ12 then had another set, isn't that right? Well, they weren't really. They weren't really. It wasn't that they had another set of information. He was telling me. He did tell me basically what was going on. Okay. And they were simply not providing that information as what they considered a need-to-know situation. I see. So. Um, they they just weren't going to tell me what they didn't feel I needed to to know. But little did they. Well, this is my paraphrase. But little did they know that Kayela was basically cluing you in. He was cluing me in and he was informing me his perspectives concerning the the treaties. I knew something was going on uh, and that is ultimately what they wanted to know about and I said well for you to know about that kind of thing then I need to know about certain other things. It's you know it was truly a quid pro quo situation and they said well okay we'll we'll tell you if you tell us. Right. So I told them and they told me a little more. Wonderful. And uh, and it was right around that same time that Lotus was actually kicking into four, um, the May 31st, 2001 event that took my prosaic project and basically threw it in the garbage can and it turned into what it is now, this, this project that it is now. Um, and as a result, I also found out from them where they said Lotus was ultimately destined. And that is, like I said, we'll, we'll discuss that in a sure. slightly future date. But isn't it true to some extent that Lotus could help Kayela now? Uh, that was the perspective of the P-45 J-Rods, and, and that is not my perspective. I see. So, because I, I make a distinction between Kayela, who's what I understand a P4, P-52, mm -hmm. and the P-45, so, but they're on the same 
uh, you know... Um, they were on the same timeline, the same track, but just separated by 7,000 years. Okay, yeah. so even so... Which is a quite a big separation. What we got... So, so what you're saying is that, in a sense, Kayella couldn't get the benefits of, of Lotus because... And nor did he ask for it. Okay. Nor did he ask for it. And, and you know, I, I will say this. This is something that David uh, um, spoke with uh, um, David on the phone not that long ago. I'll leave the last name off. I think you know who I'm... Sure, uh, but we can uh, use his name or, if it's, okay, if it's well, okay with you. Um, well, sure, David Wilcock. Okay, yeah, because we and, just interviewed uh, him. Oh, okay, wonderful. Yeah. And uh, he was was talking, we were, we were discussing the same thing, which was um, um, the box, the cube. And I, I said, you know, I said, a strange thing happened. Uh, I was pro tempore uh, um, made MJ9 for the 12 as a result of a bet that went on within MJ12. And I got a chance to tap who ended up being the last MJ9 prior to the, to the adjournment. Um, and before tapping her, who was the first female to ever set in the, in the 12, um, I got a chance to look at certain documents and look through certain archives uh, in Washington, D.C., prior to going across to the, to the continent and meeting with some folks and telling them basically I wasn't interested in their offers. Uh, I'm talking about a, a trip to Brussels. The Illuminati? Yeah. yeah. And uh, during the same time, um, the cube disappeared. Um, and it hasn't been seen since, uh, and it disappeared out of the it disappeared out of the archives. Of course, I have no idea. I have no idea where uh, the the item may be, but I do know this: I'm happy that they can't find it, because what they were doing is they were handing this cube around, and this is a question that that Bill had asked: whether there was only one cube. They were handing this cube around from country to country to the elitists in the countries to look into their own future so that they could pick the best paths for themselves. Why don't they just live their lives and try to be good people? Why do they need a little black box to tell them when to jump and how to jump? That's not being fully human, or at least from my perspective and those of, of our associates. Mm -hmm. That's not being fully human. Uh, so. As I understand, it disappeared. Now there have been certain, you know, allegations <laughs> that have been made uh, that during the time when I had, uh, um, it's almost a year ago now, yes. when I had the bad seizure. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, it was near the end of last year, was it? I no. Think, I think it was about a year. It was about a year ago, and and uh, I had a, a a very severe seizure and was actually put out of commission seriously for a while. Um, and there was a big hullabaloo to get over to my apartment to get something out of my apartment. What that object was, I won't comment. But I will say this to everybody, um, whomever took it, uh, it's in safe hands and it won't be used to harm humanity. All right. In fact, the fact that it's in safe hands will prevent it from being used to harm humanity. It has been thus far only used, aside from, well, I mean, I've got to try to justify my own behavior in Bandolier of using it for, for the purposes of skewing to get Lotus off and the abductions off, but I think that was for a beneficial cause. Right. Um, but it has been used since, since actually the 50s uh, by the potentates, by the leaders of the various countries to skew the history. Wow, that's amazing. Of the human race. Oh. And the, the, the common folk, the average people, all of us, have a right to a future which is our own. And not being, not being skewed and designated and promulgated and promoted and provoked by blue bloods who feel that they are above everyone else. Well, thank you, Dan. You're welcome. I think we probably all um, owe you a, a great thanks for, for that. Then. Oh, I'm just 
I'm, I'm happy to pass along the information. I'm honored, I'm honored to pass along the information that I, I understand that the Yellow Book is no longer accessible. Yes. That's, that's all I know about it, though. I understand. I, I totally understand. And, and, and um, um, thank you for that information. Uh, that may be the reason, too, why the Illuminati hasn't done something to us and it may also be the reason on the other end why the old magi haven't and it may be why they're all so quiet and hmm. right they I don't, don't know. have the upper hand anymore in essence the people should have the upper hand mm -hmm. and they should have the upper hand for their own destiny and and that's why we we too have gone as far as what we have to expose the NSM, NSSM 200 report, which was put in during the um, the uh, um, Ford administration, which I believe was written by um, um, Dr. Henry Kissinger, wherein he suggested the the um, uh, possible use of food as a weapon and uh, its use against, in fact, as a tool against the third world. Now, at the same time, we notice that there's a correlation going on. You can find this from the um, IPCC report concerning global warming, that if the world average temperature rises, I believe, between 2 and 3 degrees, uh, degrees Celsius, that the northern hemisphere, the, the um, um, higher latitude uh, growth will increase. However, if it goes over that, it will decrease. Yet the lower latitudes, by the way, that's where you find most of the third world countries, the, the, the two to three degree uh, Celsius increase will cause starvation and crop loss. Okay. Now, isn't this funny? Hmm. Yeah. How they're just allowing the global warming to increase with the two of the, the provoking with the use of fossil fuels. I'm not saying that's the, the total cause. It's not. Uh, there are cycles involved, short as well as, as long-term cycles. But isn't that funny? And, and it's my best guess that they'll probably order just enough ameliorative uh, steps to be taken where it levels off where the higher latitude or the, the higher latitudes probably don't lose their crops where you find the majority of the rich countries. Interesting. Um, well, it, that's, that's actually um, a fascinating political um, observation. I think that uh, it is also interesting that most of the crops are being grown, though, in the, in the lower latitudes. They're not being grown in North America anymore. Right, but, but they, you have sustainability, though. Sure. Whereas, whereas, whereas when you have the, the loss of the crops in the lower latitude, you're also losing a lot of the population from the third world, which unfortunately, according to the way that the, the documents read, some people fee find them expendable. Right. Well, we don't feel iron, that way. That's the Iron Mountain report also talks about things of that nature, and you're familiar with that. I've heard of it. Well, it's actually, it's freely available on the net to be read. Mm -hmm. um, and it talks about that, something very similar to that. Right. I, I, you know, I'm not one that, that likes to interject myself in politics at all. No, I like I the state that. of the state I, I of the that. research. But at the same time. Well, at the same time, I mean, you know, when, when we start hearing that the codex is being placed in place, which actually delimits food value, oh, you have all the food you want and starve to death while you're eating it if there's no nutrients. Right. Absolutely. Uh, when, when I start hearing that food is being used as a weapon, and it's being used concerning, too, concerning the use of fossil fuels, I start getting personally angry. There's not one person in the lower latitudes that's worth any less than me. Right. Right. You know, every, every, everybody is worth exactly the same thing on this earth, yep. and unfortunately there are individuals who feel otherwise. I understand. Okay, so Bill, uh, the question you were asking, now that we've kind of, let's, let's talk about, um, first of all, you mentioned Will Uhouse. Hmm. The son of Bill Uhouse. The son Uhouse. of Bill Uhouse, who's right, very right. well known. Bill who? We didn't realize that, that he was actually, it was the son you were saying yes. who had access to that technology. Yes. Um, Bill was the builder of the avionics and the testing equipment the back engineered ARV testing equipment and the avionics. I actually saw some of the equipment, and this is in the, the, the tape that Marcia and I did with him in a, in a, a room, 
Uh, I uh, actually saw some of the equipment, some of the diagnostic equipments in the in the uh, the B Bay underneath underneath the Galileo Bay uh, that he actually built. And so when I started describing it, Will looked at me and said, oh, "That's what my dad built." So we had a, a very nice little connection there. So are you saying but it's Will who had uh, experience around the looking glass equipment in the 70s. His son, Bill Uhouse's son. And Will Uhouse is alive now. Yes. Okay. Oh, yes. So that's very interesting. And that his, means... his wife, Terry, um, they, in fact, from what I understand, they met during the course of, of uh, um, conversations concerning our information coming to the public. Terry and, and Will met one another, fell in love, and were married. That makes me feel kind of personally really good. <laughs> okay, well, so it sounds like Will knows quite a bit about what makes the ARV run, then, mm -hmm. if his father had something to do with the back engineering. Yes. Okay, so in 1947, when yes. the cube was discovered, um, it must have really screwed up the idea of the two timelines by bringing in uh, the ability to, I mean, I don't know what the cube can and can't do. Well, first of all, the cube wasn't actu actually was not discovered in 1947. There's a mixture of the stories involved. The cube was actually, the information about the cube, its existence, was known as of 1946. It was further discussed in 1947 after a certain crash in uh, Midwestern, lower um, uh, southwestern state, New Mexico. And, and um, following which, during the, the first brokering for treaties by the Orions with Eisenhower, the cube was handed to Eisenhower, it was in fact expected to go to the United Nations authorities, and it was in fact spirited away by the United States military. Okay. They didn't hand it over. So, so, but you, the way you're talking about the cube is that it sounds like it, it, it connects emotionally with the viewers in a sense. It does, and, and in fact that it was handed, it was actually Orion technology. Okay. And, and it was handed over by them in the spirit of goodwill, but a misassessment as to our evolutionary state, mm -hmm. our, our ability to handle the issue and handle the equipment. Uh, they felt us more balanced than what we actually were. Okay, well this is, I mean, this, this opens almost Pandora's box in a sense of, of United States history. That is Pandora's box. Yes, and I, I'm, not, I'm not exactly certain what was seen relative to the cube for 9-11. Mm -hmm. However, the analysis which I was asked to do, of course, I've paid the price now that I've actually done it. Um, again, people don't want to hear the answers that I came up with, but the, the analysis that I did indicated that certainly there's, there's at minimum, a, a great suspicion concerning the, the delay of response. And, and the information that I have directly from one of the former seated members was in fact that we were aware, but this was looking glass technology, not the cube, that we were aware as of the middle 1990s that there would be a coming Islamic extremist war with the United States. We were also aware of certain alternative situations that they they use the statistics from the looking glass from the variability between the different pictures to to show that would be occurring at the same time another probability at the same time and from their perspective that the least of the two consequences was 9-11 uh, I am aware of what the other possible consequence was I'm not willing to come out and, and start mentioning it because I don't know what the consequences are of speaking the things that haven't been that have not thus far happened yet the probabilities existed that they could. Yeah. No. So I, I hear so you. you know I I'm feeling a little bit there's a little weight when it comes to that. But okay, you're saying though that that the looking glasses have been as you called it decommissioned. Yes, ma'am. And that means across the board. Across the board. Okay. They are shut down. And you said there was 50 man-made devices, and I'm assuming I said I said at that, least 50 that were, would access um, or create stargates, in essence, out of uh, natural 
vortexes. Yes. And they would some of, suck them in or make them available. Looking to glass them. And, and a looking glass is not the same as a stargate. No, a looking glass is a back-engineered form from the original cylinder seal descriptions on how to build the units that they made stargates. So, in in essence, you could take a looking glass yes. unit and make a couple changes to the equipment, okay. lift it up on an angle, okay. put field posts around it, and open up a hole to step through. Sure. Okay, but the looking glass can show you the future. So are we saying future that probabilities, were, not the future? Okay. So are we saying there were fifty looking glasses in operation as well? Oh no, there were there were much less. Okay. Much yeah, less. we had uh, we had uh, a basic monopoly over the looking glass that and India. India brokered early on with Indira when Indira Gandhi was brokering the the committee of the majority between the United States and the Soviet Union because the Soviets were threatening to start their own treaty system up with with the extraterrestrials which would have become untenable we agreed then to expand MJ-12 from a whole a wholly operated and owned American operation to an international operation and thus was born the committee of the majority between 1963 and 1967 and when that information was brokered uh, that happened in parallel with, kind of under the table, but in parallel with the United Nations treaties involving things like uh, the um, Test Ban Treaty and the Outer Space Treaty. And so it was being done at the same time under cover of UN support. The diplomats were going back and forth and brokering the opening up so that the treaty system would be a single treaty system and thus tenable and, and, and manageable uh, to hopefully a good outcome and we'll be knowing within the next few years whether that was successful. Okay, so this is, I mean, this is really fascinating. You're saying that some other countries, India for one, had access to looking glass technology. Yes, ma'am. They, they, they had that written in as far back as the 1960s and 70s when it was actually being back-engineered from the Stargate material. And and so at the same time that Will Uhouse, for instance, was was looking at the early generation looking glass, um, India had the same. Okay, and are you at liberty to say what other countries had had access to that? To the information or to the equipment? To the looking glass, to a looking glass, or the ability no. to create a looking glass and look back, look at time, look forward no. into their own histories. No, is because that, that not exception? And, I, and I'll, t I'll I'll tell you why the answer is no. Uh, within the treaties, the looking glass, as well as the stargates, as well as the cube. Uh, and and information movement pods uh, are all con are all contained within the treaty system. Uh, within that treaty system, it also prohibits and allows certain passage of information amongst delegates on where the looking glass material is and where the information flow is, what the access is. Being that I stood in Bandelier, I'm considered a delegate. Therefore, I cannot tell you. Okay, so you can't tell me who has no uh, access to that technology aside from India and the United States. Right. Okay. No. So, but we can assume that some countries, perhaps that is the leadership of some countries, um, may have had access to this technologies. Uh, at some I, point. I think that it's that it's fair to say that we can assume that they had access to the information from it. But I, I, I wouldn't place any characterization over any assumption of whom may or may not have had it. Okay. All right. Well, it, I you thank know, you for the it, question, though. Okay. But it also gives you a whole different way of looking at history. I mean, certainly. Indeed, it does. You, 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 you know. I mean, this stuff is got to be, you know, as natural to you as you know, getting up in the morning, you know and having a cup of coffee. This is all part of your world view. No, there's nothing as natural to me as getting up and having my cup of coffee. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, but and we should have never built. We should... The, the Stargate, yes. Okay, for, for the purpose of speaking with the visitors from the other timelines, yes, absolutely. The Looking Glass, no. That was done because of our own shortcomings as people who aspire to things that we maybe shouldn't try to grab a hold of. Well, it should have never been built 
gives you power, right? We're talking about power and the misuse of power here. Yes. I mean, bottom line, right? Yes. So and I am an advocate against that misuse. Right. In fact, well, I could say against the misuse. I am an advocate against its use, period. Okay, so let's, let's say that one has the looking glass and you're saying it shows probabilities. And mm -hmm. one of the things we were wondering is, how does it do that? Well, from the best I, I understand, and I was speaking with Bill just a little while about it, uh, a little while ago, the, the rings and the amount of information um, via energy, which is passed into it, and I've got to be very, very careful with this. Um, the position of the rings, their orientation, the energy running through them, the position of the barrel, etc., because you can raise the barrel up on an armature inside the center of it, uh, all come into play as if you have an onion with the various layers of the onion. As you move through the different energy levels, you also move through the different layers, so you get different bits of information. Now imagine an almost infinite number of layers overlaying in comparison to the positions of the rings and amount and an almost infinite amount of energy um, uh, that you can add or subtract. Tuning it up, tuning it down. Well, it sounds Instead of nice going up by one hertz or by two hertz, maybe by a, a, a thousandth of a hertz, up okay. and down. But it so. sounds like you're working with a almost like a kaleidoscope effect. You know, you know, like a kaleidoscope, a real kaleidoscope, the way you would turn and twist and and focus, and each time you get a different design, right? Well, right, except each except time the colors are changed. Yeah, you get it. You get a different design, and the colors change. But it's like we're working with multiple kaleidoscopes, where when you fit, when you find two different probabilities that you would run into, uh, you have two kaleidoscopes, and you make a change on one kaleidoscope that may be that may factor or function to a different angular change on another kaleidoscope so you get two separate pictures that you then have that are flashing back and forth okay but yes okay so i could I, is best there, analogy is to there that. an interface with a computer to get this to get these readouts yes the probability yeah in fact there's a there's a deinterlacing system which they used to actually deinterlace the the flashing back and forth of the two probabilities or the multiples that they had at certain times well, when, when it starts you skipping could them, right so you could look at them closer well what they did is they deinterlaced the video and then reintegrated the video and watched the individual videos then yes, yes. and then determined yes. statistically how much time was spent on each video to determine the amount of probability of each event occurring and they tested that against probabilities in the field and probabilities of future occurrence to get a system which functions scientifically and that's okay so well I'm gonna go with that and I'm gonna actually say what they might have been doing is then looking back to see in other words if they saw an event in the, in the looking glass all they had to do was calibrate or look at the different possibilities see which one happened and then that's what they did as time went on absolutely and that's right started. on that's right on yeah that is right on the beating okay and and you know some people so like I said some people say it's blue smoke and mirrors but then again I was told something in 2001 that's I'm living in right now okay okay without going to what it is absolutely and and like I said we'll talk about that in the future but you know it, it it's the best scientific equipment equipment that I can imagine for the determining of such a thing. Mm -hmm. But it goes to the old question, just because we have the power to do something, should we? Sure. And I am a 100% a advocate. She and I had a, um, um, more than a small dust-up out at Frenchman Mountain over this very same thing, which actually resulted in me walking alone down Lake Mead back toward Las Vegas. Uh, with she and I yelling and screaming at each other along the roadside. Uh, they were doing tests out at, at Frenchman Mountain during the time that the, that the Rosen Bridge was being accessed there, the Einstein Rosen Bridge, with the equipment. They had the, the curtains up and all of that business and up where Metro couldn't see it from the top of the mountain and all of that. And they were accessing there and there was a mistake and a, and, and, and a small explosion out there on the east side of this little what we call the conquistador helmet uh, and she wanted me to go out there with her to help clean some of the evidence up 
of it, and she and I got in a more of a little dust up because I didn't want anything to do with it. Because I don't believe, I'm no Luddite, I mean, I'm all for grand technology, but I don't believe in playing with things which actually deal with looking into the future. And, it, and there's a, another issue that was going on at the time, in fact, that the, the variety of communication which was going on via this equipment from elsewhere, I presume she will still, hasn't, won't admit to me, but uh, I presume that it was from Orion, and, and it was information, uh, defense-related information, on how this type of equipment, how a, an Einstein-Rosen bridge at a distance could be used to pull information out of a defense computer system. Uh -huh. And I don't mean a U.S. defense computer system. And I said, you know what? No. Look, we've got the technology here. We've got the talent. We've got the willpower. And we've got the willing to defend our own country without the use of something involving time technology. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to go up against, for instance, God help us, the Chinese on the ground. But at the same time, I don't fear their country either. I believe that we should be diplomatic with them and have, and have a firm understanding and a respect for one another. But I also don't fear them. And, and so th the use of a technology like that is not honorable to me. Right. Well, it's like knowing knowing how the game plays out um, means you can play your advantage ahead of time mm -hmm. and make sh making sure that that eventuality will will occur. That's why I was so so interested in in uh, when I was doing my time, doing my time with with the jobs involving safety and and security training and all of that here in Las Vegas, when I was interacting with with uh, Marcia and the I, because we were literally on a daily basis talking about that same thing and about the psychology of individuals who come to a table to play a game and who cheat to alter the outcome of the game. And that whole psychology, it's, it's something which I'm not, you know, is, is, is not foreign to me. And so that helped, if you will, prime the wick of of the 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 explosion between myself and that variety of technology, uh, which actually primed my disagreement with it. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I understand what you're saying, and there's a million questions that all of this generates. Oh, I know. I, I know we don't have all night, but um, I would like to ask. Yeah, there's you're thirty of them here. Knowing, <laughs> but 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 now that I know what I know and what what you've at least communicated, um, you're saying. You don't want to use the looking glass for advantage over country to country, but what about country to off no, world? No, 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 no. It shouldn't be used at all. I understand, but all right. But is there something there? I mean, in in other words, is this technology something that they are using now to look at our relationships with? Because. The technology down. is not being used at all right now. Okay, and, but the reason it's not used now is because of where we're going into the galactic, um, the plane of the... Yeah. As of about 2017, I would expect probably that all of these little pieces of equipment will probably all get reassembled, yeah. Turned back on. Oh, sure. 2017? That's quite mm, a while 2016, ago. 2017. Oh, not until then? Probably not. I, I, I'm figuring that they're probably going to act conservatively on this. That's what all of the people of wisdom have suggested to them, oh, wow. is to act conservatively. That, yes, uh, the, the so-called cycle of catastrophe or season of catastrophe of, of Falconelli, the, the time period from, oh, right around 1992 to right around 2012, right around that area, um, while we will have passed it past 2012, we really ought to get through the entire cycle, which is about 1980 to about 2016, to feel confident that the interpretation from the timeline from the future about their own catastrophe is not off by a few years. We're talking about 45,000 years or 52,000 years respectively. We have difficulty understanding what happened 2,000 years ago. And we're talking about 50,000 years here. So it's very wise for them to wait. Okay, and you mean turn 
the, the looking glasses are now decommissioned, but also the Stargate technology. Yeah, yeah, they're decommissioned, and the Stargates and the looking glasses, I'm sure they're all in their little mothballed containers and all of that, and they have been separated. The three components of each have been separated and moved to different power structures, diplomatic and military authorities on the world, in the world. Oh. And we're talking about the EU specifically, the UN and NATO. Those are, are in specific control of one of the three components each. And I cannot comment as to which component is contained by whom. Okay, but you're saying there's no doubt whatsoever that all this technology has been decommissioned. There is no doubt whatsoever when it comes to the, the looking glasses and when it comes to the Stargate technology that it has been decommissioned. And however, however, there are a few threats going on, ongoing threats from present countries stating that they will put it together at their will, do their own self-determination. And those countries, if push comes to shove, will be shoved. Okay, meaning put it together now? Or as in, as in build one themselves now. Yes, that's what I'm asking. Yeah, what was, what was extant has been collected. I'm, I'm under very good assurance that what was setting there has now been collected and decommissioned. Okay, and we're assuming Iraq is one of those. Oh, absolutely. Basically, they were able to pinpoint in the looking glass the very highest probability for those things to occur. Uh, uh, that's true. That's true. And, and Bill was, was um, asking about a, a future date involving another thing, and a, a year was given to me. And uh, he was saying, well, if a year can be provided for that, right. why wouldn't a year be provided for the other? Well, there was a highest probability year for it. Uh, however, telling me about something that might happen in the future involving a project, which we're, we're currently involved, is one matter. Sure. Willy-nilly throwing a date out, which is a probability involving the lives and the destiny of all of us here on the earth and specifically to a predicted four and a half or four billion people death is another matter okay. that that carries an entire different weight with it but are to we to assume that we've passed that year yet or is you're that you're not to, to you're uh no you're not to assume no okay that. so we're still that's still in the offing what we're looking at is a very low probability of the event of yes. the event or the set of events yes. occurring Yes. At this point. Yes. We're looking, we're looking at a low probability of the higher catastrophic portion of the events occurring. I expect that the, the events which would kick it off are still going to happen. For instance, the, the um, solar max, which is coming at around 2012, and, and the expected uh, loss of GPS equipment and things like that, which it is out there as part of, uh, um, on, the, on the web. You can find that as uh, uh, Engadget, I think, was one of the one of the groups that spoke about the loss of GPS and uh, in satellite communication. Meaning, electromagnetic during. grid is going to go down. Yes, yes, okay, and, th and that would be that would be the time that I would expect the highest probability of the T2 event having correlated to the history of the J Rods and the Orions. But that's as far really? as I can. Wow. Okay. Well, that's that's pretty. I close. can't give a I can't give a date though. Yeah, I understand. Uh, I can, but I shouldn't. Uh, because yeah. people will then target toward a date. And I, I, you know, there are people out there now that are saying, oh, you know, it's right around the corner <laughs> at any moment now. <laughs> Why won't the aliens save us? Yeah. We need to save ourselves. Okay, and that's why the steps have been taken that have been taken in the world and are still underway so that we will save ourselves. Mm -hmm.